that look like? Come on. Some little Bourbon biscuits for you all. You see, that's the trouble with being in the public eye. You can't even step out of your own front door without finding a blasted camera crew. There it isn't the Daily Mirror, it's the BBC. And I'm a shy and retiring sort of person, which is why I live in this humble cottage here in Ireland, where I write my novels and compose my programmes and think very deeply about life and the meaning of cooking and stuff like that. And as a rule, I wouldn't let you in, but the director really begged me and said, please, please show them your house and show them something essentially Irish to cook. So I thought, oh, all right. So come on in. Potato cakes, potato breads are very important to Irish cooking, to Irish diet, the whole bit. And the best way to get them is to whip into Marks and Spencer's and buy a packet. But of course, we predictably wouldn't do a thing like that. We have to stand burning in front of a peat fire, in front of an 18th century stove, no magic mixes, no electricity, and I've got to do the real business in the 200-year-old fashion. This is a pot of potatoes, OK? Back over here, Richard. Close up on this uh, wicker work sieve, strainer. You pour the potatoes out. If you can, oh dear, into there. This is very difficult. Right, carefully putting them in so as not to damage them. There we are. You lift those up and it's about this time you begin to wonder why you are here. Happily, I am here with my great chum, Fanula, who knows all about potato bread. First of all, Fanula, why couldn't we have saved trouble by peeling the potatoes first? That would have been very helpful, wouldn't it? Because it's traditional to boil them when the skins. Also, you can save the skins and you can feed them to the chickens or the pigs or you can throw them back in the fire again. Did, I mean, do people still eat potato cakes a great deal in Ireland or is this just oh, yes. a trip down memory lane? No, no, they eat, eat, eat them still. You can buy them at home bakeries, you can make them at home or you can just go into any supermarket and buy them. You use them with the Ulster Fry and it's very popular still. Brilliant. Well, look, Richard, I have to... I mean, this is the high point of a regular 18th century farmer's day. You see, there were no television in those days. He would dress in the typical apparel, as I'm wearing today, silk bow tie, hand chase cufflinks, suede jacket, Rolex watch, everything like that. And he was set about peeling these. And that's, in fact, a rather boring process. So you take a little tour round this wonderful estate, the Ulster Folk Museum, and join us again when we're at a really interesting bit. OK, right, off I go. They're hot. Oh, I see you picking up on a fork. <laughs> Every Sunday they come in their thousands to savour the delights of yesteryear. I think there's a great plan afoot to turn these islands into one great theme park where nobody ever gets old and where Uncle Mac is still on the wireless saying, Goodbye, children, everywhere. Thrilled to the memories of the three R's, Christopher Robin, and I wonder what prayers were said at the foot of this bed. Well, I hope you enjoyed that little mini tour around the park, around the estate. Rather interesting, I think you'll find it. While you're away, I've been beetling away. Haha, <laughs> this is a beetle. Crushing the potato into a fairly smooth but still lumpy mixture, adding some plain flour. You could add wholemeal flour if you want to. A bit of butter, a bit of salt. And now all I have to do is roll it out. If I'm a bit strange this morning, they built this cottage with doorways five foot three high, and I just cracked my head in the most monstrous way on the top, and it is actually spinning. So I'll have a quick cup of tea. As they always say in an emergency, have a cup of tea, don't they? Oh, forgot to put the milk and sugar in. Never mind. Uh, so we roll those out very quickly. A bit more flour on the top. How thick do you think they ought to be? A bit thinner than that. A bit thinner than that. And then the griddle's up to frying speed. You cut out some little wedges using another 18th century implement, the egg slice. Like that. Who's on round here, Richard? Because on they go. Notice I have the griddle already dusted impeccably. Do a few more. Sorry to keep running in front of you, but we're not a studio production. We don't have 18 cameras and cutaways and stuff like that. We pop those on there. Another potato cake. And then you'll come back here, Richard. I didn't say you could leave the stove. <laughs> so I want you to take a nice little shot of me roasting because I have a little thing, what we call a payoff. You see, in a minute they'll do one of those magic things, a mixes or a wobbly picture, and you'll see us enjoying these crisp, cooked, golden, delicious potato cakes. Close up on there and I'll step out a shot. So, there you are. Fifteen minutes later, they are cooked to perfection. Well, I think to perfection. Anyway, you just place them onto the plate like that, add a little butter, have a little taste. Fanula, would you like to have yes, a little taste? Yes, please. So you tell me if they're OK. Put butter on there for you. Right. Well, Fanula's choking on that. 
I must tell you that we've had lots of letters from people saying, how do you choose your locations? I mean, we all know you've got griddles at home, you've all got 18th century fireplaces. In fact, you don't really need this lesson. But the way we choose the programmes, in the director's office is a very large map of the British Isles and three darts. And we throw them at the board, and wow. this one happened to land a little bit near Belfast. Anyway, enough little jokes and things like that. Mm -hmm. Business is business. We've only booked this place till half past 11. The next party's coming in for one of her real demonstrations, so we must be, as they say, trotting along. See you in the next sequence.